Sergey Brin is the 11th richest person in the world with a net of $81 billion. He and Larry Page founded Google. The company's valuation is around $1.26 trillion, which is more than the GDP of entire countries like Saudi Arabia, Netherlands, Poland, and Sweden. With searches, Google knows what you search for and what are your likes, your hobbies, and how much time you spend on the computer. Through them, Google collects your data. This way, Google knows about you more than you think. Sergey established himself as a math prodigy early on. He tilted towards math, puzzles, and maps. Sergey Brin, a PhD student there, was assigned to show Paige around. The two instantly formed a connection. Page, on the other end, was more interested in the World Wide Web. They built out the program and named it Backrub. The crawler became popular with computer science students at Stanford. In 1996, Brennan and Page changed the name of their tool from Backrub to Google. In February 1999, Google outgrew its garage offices and moved to a new location in Palo Alto. In 2001, Eric Schmidt joined Google as chairman of its board and then CEO. Brennan Page took Google public in 2004, raising $1.67 billion at a valuation of $23 billion. Both worked on a university project for a search engine that later became so powerful that no one had ever thought that a single company can accumulate so much power in just a decade. Sergey Brin is the 11th richest person in the world with a net of $81 billion according to Forbes. He and Larry Page founded Google from current YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki's garage in Menlo Park. Google is bigger than you think. First, let's talk about money. Google's revenue is around $257.6 billion, which is more than the GDPs of many countries and has over 186,000 employees. The company's valuation is around $1.26 trillion, which is more than the GDP of entire countries like Saudi Arabia, Netherlands, Poland, and Sweden. Google is worth more than the GDP of all the countries, except 17 countries. Now, these are only numbers, and money is not the real and only power of Google. The real power lies in the database. Google has the largest database in the world with detailed information on 4.5 billion people, which is around 56% of the entire population. Yes, you heard right, Google keeps data of more than half of people. If you're watching this video on YouTube, your data and information is probably saved at one of Google's data centers. With searches, Google knows what you search for and what are your likes, your hobbies, and how much time you spend on the computer. With YouTube, Google knows what you're watching and when you watch. With Google Maps and Android, Google knows where you're going and where you spend most of your time. It's safe to say, Google knows more about you than many of your close friends. Now, these are only Google Direct products. There are indirect ways through which Google collects your data, and one of them is Google AdSense. There are around 81 million websites that use Google AdSense, which means the majority of websites you visit are customers of Google and through them, Google collects your data. This way, Google knows about you more than you think. This all was made possible due to one man. That is Sergey Brin, who was the mastermind behind all these data collection engines. He made the foundations that made Google the most powerful company. Want to know how he did it? Watch the full video. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinary successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. Sergei Mikhailovich Brin was born on August 21st, 1973 in Moscow, the Soviet Union. His father was Mikhail Brin and his mother, Eugenia Brin. Both were graduates of Moscow State University in 1979. The family emigrated from the Soviet Union to Vienna, then Paris, before finding their way to the United States in October 1979. There, Mikhail Brin got a job as a mathematics professor at the University of Maryland, while his wife would join NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Brin was six years old when his family reached the United States. He attended the Paint Branch Montessori School in Adelphi. His first year at the school was difficult since he did not know English and spoke with a heavy Russian accent. Thankfully, one of his school teachers agreed to mentor him, even becoming a friend of the family. Sergey established himself as a math prodigy early on. He tilted towards math, puzzles, and maps. He particularly loved multiplication math. His father encouraged his math skills and even tutored him back home. For high school, Sergey attended Eleanor Roosevelt High School in Greenbelt. 
He finished it in three years, collecting a year's worth of college credits. This later helped him finish college at the University of Maryland in just three years. There, he majored in math and computer science and graduated in 1993 among the top students in his class. He won the National Science Foundation scholarship to attend graduate school and went on to join Stanford University. He graduated from Stanford with a master's in 1995. Sergey then set his sights on earning a PhD, so he enrolled in a PhD program at Stanford. It was while in this program that his path would intertwine with his future co-founders, Larry Page. In 1995, Page was thinking of joining Stanford University for his graduate studies. Sergey Brin, a PhD student there, was assigned to show Page around. The two instantly formed a connection. Though they differed on many things and found each other obnoxious, they relished the intellectual conversations they shared. The two spoke over the course of two days and became good friends. Page ended up joining Stanford for his graduate studies. At Stanford, Bren, a polymath, concentrated on data mining and trend extraction. He enjoyed working with large data sets and ended up writing over a dozen papers for top academic journals. He also established a website for rating films and wrote a software program for translating documents from TEX to HTML. Page, on the other end, was more interested in the World Wide Web. Specifically, he was developing a tool to infer the importance of a research paper based on how many citations it received from other papers. He told Brent about his project, and in 1996, they decided to build out a prototype of their project and use it to rank web pages. At the time, search engines ranked pages primarily based on how many times a word appeared on them. The result was several pages of irrelevant search results. Page and Bren opened that with their search tool, they could generate more relevant results for users by prioritizing pages with the highest quality backlinks. At the time, both were students at Stanford and lived in the school dorms. They built out the program and named it Backrub. The internet had then about 10 million documents and millions of links between them. Bryn and Page were unaware of how much computing power they needed to crawl such an expansive web page infrastructure. Driven by curiosity and naivety, they just built Backrub, converting Page's room into a machine lab and Bryn's room into a programming center. The two scraped together computer parts such as hard drives and old CPUs from computer labs and loading docks to build their first data crawling system. Once it was complete, they unleashed their web crawler on the Stanford website. The crawler became popular with computer science students at Stanford and later students doing other courses began using it. By the fall of 1996, so many students were using Backrub it was taking up almost half of the university's network bandwidth. This is when Bren and Page realized they were onto something. In 1996, Bren and Page changed the name of their tool from Backrub to Google. A reference to Google, a large number comprised of one followed by 100 zeros. This signified that their search engine was meant to process vast quantities of information. They registered the domain name Google.com on September 15, 1997. A year later, they decided to move out of their Stanford dorm rooms and start a company. In 1998, Brennan Page rented a garage space in Molino Park, California from Susan Wojcicki, paying $1,700 a month. In August that year, the two raised $100,000 in seed funding from Andy Bechtelsheim. Andy's friend, David Cheriton, followed up with a $250,000 investment. Two other people, Ram Shiram and Jeff Bezos, provided additional funding that year, giving Google $1 million in starting capital. Brennan and Page used the money to register Google as a company. Page became the CEO and Bren the president. They also made several hires and bought equipment. In December 1998, PC Magazine reported on the efficiency of Google, proclaiming it had a knack for bringing out the most relevant results. This led to a surge of traffic for the search engine. Soon, it was processing 10,000 searches a day. In February 1999, Google outgrew its garage offices and moved to a new location in Palo Alto. The location housed eight employees. In June, Brennan Page announced $25 million in new venture funding from firms such as Sequoia Capital and Kleiner Perkins. The company later moved into a new office in Mountain View. In 2000, Google became available in 15 languages, including French, Chinese, German, Spanish, Japanese, Portugal, and Swedish. In June, Google indexed its 1 billionth URL, becoming the largest search engine in the world.
The company also partnered with Yahoo to become its default search provider and launched AdWords, enabling people to start buying ads on search result pages. In 2001, Eric Schmidt joined Google as chairman of its board and then CEO. Page became president of products and brand president of technology. In July, Google launched Image Search, giving access to 250 million images. In August, it opened its first international location in Tokyo, Japan. And by December, Google had 3 billion documents indexed. In 2002, Google launched Google News and opened an office in Sydney, Australia. In 2003, Google bought the parent company of Blogger and kickstarted Google Grants, an advertising program for nonprofits. Google Print, renamed to Google Book Search, started that year. Bryn was named one of MIT's Technology Review's Top 100 Innovators Under 35 in 2002. In 2003, he received an honorary MBA from IE Business School and was a national finalist for the EY Entrepreneur of the Year Award. In 2004, Google reached 8 billion web pages indexed and over 880 million images. Its employees exceeded 800 and it processed 200 million queries a day. Google launched Google Scholar that year as well as Gmail. It also acquired Keyhole, whose technology enabled Google Earth. Brennan Page took Google public in 2004, raising $1.67 billion at a valuation of $23 billion. Both Brennan Page became multi-billionaires, while several early employees of Google became millionaires. Since its IPO in 2004, Brennan Page have grown Google leaps and bounds. In 2005, they launched Google Maps Navigation, Google Mobile Web Search, and Google Analytics to help websites measure the impact of their marketing. In 2006, they launched Google Trends to showcase popular searches. By then, the company had $10 billion in revenue and over 10,000 employees. Later on, the company launched Google Chrome, a web browser, and Google Cloud in 2008. Google Fiber, Broadband Internet in 2010, Google Plus, a social network in 2011, and Google Glass, computer glasses in 2013, Google Lens, camera search in 2017, and Google Stadia, cloud gaming in 2019. Google also built out its portfolio through acquisitions. It acquired YouTube in 2006 for $1.65 billion and DoubleClick in 2008 for $3.1 billion. In 2014, it bought DeepMind Technologies to steer its efforts in artificial intelligence and robotics. Other Google ventures include Calico, Health and Wellness, Waymo, Self-Driving Cars, and Sycamore, Quantum Computing. Google also makes consumer electronics, smartphones, and tablets. In 2015, Google underwent a restructuring that gave it a parent company called Alphabet Incorporated. Brent served as Alphabet's president until 2019. He remains a board member and controlling shareholder alongside Page. As of 2022, Google is the most visited website in the world with over 89 billion visits monthly. It has a 91.9% .9 dominance of the search market and processes 8.5 billion queries a day. In 2021, Google made revenues of $257.6 billion and net earnings of $76 billion. As of November 2022, Brent has a net worth of $82 billion and is the 11th richest person in the world. He was inducted into the National Academy of Engineering in 2009. This is one of the highest honors in the engineering world. Brand has another venture known as Lighter Than Air Research, which aims to build out electric airships. He's an acclaimed speaker and commentator on matters of technology and business. He's spoken at conferences by the World Economic Forum and shares his views on TV shows hosted by stations like CNN and CNBC. Bryn runs from the Bren and Wojcicki Foundation. Through it, he dominates hundreds of millions of dollars to organizations like the Michael J. Fox Foundation, Parkinson's Disease Research, Human Rights Foundation, Tipping Point Community, Poverty Alleviation, and the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society. Bryn has previously donated to the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Sergey Bren came from an affluent background. His mother worked at NASA while his father was a university professor. Sergey went to prestige Stanford where he met with Larry Page, who also came from a very educated background. Both worked on a university project for a search engine that later became so powerful that no one had ever thought that a single company can accumulate so much power in just a decade. 
Thank you for watching our video. Subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.